So have any of you ever heard of whistling diesel? It just so happens I bought his bike. So this is it. And we just got the bike all loaded up. It's a 2016 Yamaha FC07. And as you guys can already tell, it's got the knobby tires on it. It's got the crash cage on it. It's got some great accessories. That way we can take it off road. Now, this is one of the very, very few things that I guess Cody didn't absolutely destroy. But as per the description on Facebook Marketplace, this thing was supposed to be immaculate. But I'm not quite sure why I expected it to be mint. Now, of course, since he did own it, it definitely got ran through its paces, but it never got a true test on camera. And that's exactly what I plan to do. Well, we've got a dead battery, and I live on too flat of ground to be able to bump start it, so we're gonna jump it off. So I originally saw this bike posted on his Instagram story saying it was for sale, and I believe the list price was right around $8,500. Now at that point, I just went ahead and shot him an offer for $6,500 because to me, I've had these bikes before in the past. I had a 2018 MT-07. I know what they're worth and I wasn't willing to pay too much extra, but needless to say, he didn't take the $6,500 offer. Now go a couple weeks down the road, I noticed that he dropped the price all the way down to $7,000. I was still interested in the bike and just reached back out to see if he'd take $6,500 now. And we talked about it a little bit more. I did agree to pay the $7,000 sales price on this, but we didn't actually come up with a set time to meet up and drop this thing off. So another week goes down the road and the price actually gets dropped to $6,300. So basically as soon as it got dropped to $6,300, I was dead set on getting it. We ended up getting a date and time that worked out and we ended up meeting up, signing over the title. They actually gave me a couple extra stickers, some pretty cool stuff. But needless to say, once I did see it in person, I saw that it wasn't necessarily mint. So this bike is definitely the definition of a 10 footer. It looks great from far away. You can see those knobby tires, like I say, the crash bar. And of course we've got the turn signal deletes. It's got an upgraded headlight, exhaust, even the tail light and the turn signals, which is really cool. 
and I ran a similar setup on my 2018 MT-07 in blue. But once you dive in just a little bit closer, you can see that Whistle and Diesel definitely own this thing. So you can tell here the wheels are actually painted and since they were painted, they're not necessarily chipped, but they are marred up on the sides here. And then also a lot of this must have been painted as well. You can see some of it's just scratched off as well as on the foot pegs, which no big deal. Even these pieces up here, which were a different color of plastic have been painted. So that stuff is just gonna flake off pretty easy. Now the crash bar itself, it looks great and it doesn't look like it's been through too much abuse. No actual dents or damage like that. Now this type of material, the powder coating must have been pretty thin because there is some rust spots here and I'm sure the rocks have bounced up from this tire, smashed it. And as soon as you get some of that powder coat and flaked off, it's gonna rust up pretty quick. So this is something we definitely need to touch back up because the crash bar is a really cool part of this FZ07. Now the exhaust you guys already heard, you can see right here, it does sound great. It actually, it sounds really good on this MT07 or this FZ07. It's really livened it up quite a bit. And then you'll also see up here, we've got the aftermarket brake and clutch kit. And with this, it's just an adjustable lever. That's basically all that it does, but it is pretty nice to have the adjustability and I've already changed that up for now. I believe this is an aftermarket seat. Now on my MT-07, it was a very nice, comfortable seat. For this seat, it must be aftermarket. It's pretty stiff and quite a bit more narrow. And of course, this is not factory either. That just goes with the delete for the rear. I do love those meaty tires on the back. Now, once I was looking over it a little bit more in depth, you guys can see here, the rubber has been burnt on this machine. I mean, look at this, just caked on burnt rubber, which is crazy. It's even got it all the way up on the shock, so I'm gonna have to pressure wash all that off. But you can tell that is just insane. I mean, look at that, that is crazy. I've never seen a bike with this much burnt rubber still on it. Absolutely insane. Now, of course you guys already saw, since it did get cold here, I actually had to take the seat off to jump this thing off. Whenever I did pick it up, he told me that he had to bump start it just because he's left the key on quite a few times, which is strange, but I'm just gonna get a new battery for it. No big deal at all. Another really weird thing is gonna be the tape, the actual duct tape on top of the wheel weights. Now, I don't have much experience with these knobby tires on actual road bikes like this, but I guess that makes sense up for higher speeds. Now, I picked this thing up on Wednesday and I actually drove it all the way to work about 30 minutes away, 30 minutes back on Thursday. And it did perform amazingly well. Even on the interstate going up to about 80, 90 miles an hour, you couldn't tell much of a difference with these knobbies versus the regular tires. The only time I lost a little bit of confidence with these tires was just going around tight curves. Just because whenever you do lean it all the way over, it just doesn't seem like you're gonna get the same amount of traction that, <laughs> that you get with a normal tire. And that's definitely understandable but I'm definitely excited to test the limits on this bike on the street as well as off-road and make some awesome content for you guys. Now, one of the really cool things I noticed, of course, whenever he handed me over the keys, I saw this key tag, which is probably a pretty accurate representation of how he feels about most of his vehicles. Now, this one wasn't beat up too bad. He also gave me some pretty cool stickers, which is always cool. And another thing I noticed is he actually had it titled in his business name. I know a lot of people don't give Whistle and Diesel too much credit for how smart he is. Even just this little thing of having the motorcycle in his business name, it obviously shows he has a lot more knowledge about the business than a lot of people think. Now, something pretty cool. If you guys watch the channel, you know, I keep most of my plates from all of my cars I've had in the past, as well as some of the motorcycles. Now, this specific tag was actually on his which is really cool. You can see the rubber on the back, which is awesome. So for me, having this tag was really, really neat. He also gave me another tag where it was actually titled. Just to have the tag that was in the video with the bike, it's pretty cool to have stuff like that. Now, I've got some really big plans for this bike and testing it out, seeing what kind of capabilities this machine actually has off-road, and also testing it with the Rubicon 392. I've got something new in the works, actually just a carrier to mount up to the hitch on the back of this Rubicon 392. Oh, I can load this thing up and just leave it on there all winter. It'll be pretty cool to drive around with that motorcycle on the back. It'll look cool, and also whenever I want to get out and play in the snow, once the snow finally does hit, I'll have two toys to do it in. It's actually the first day of the year here where it's around 30 degrees, so it is absolutely wicked cold out here, and I didn't really expect it to be this cold or this wet and nasty, so it wasn't going to be a good day to really head out to the trail and test this thing out, but that's definitely to come pretty soon, so definitely subscribe that way you don't miss out on the action. Now, of course, if you guys haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think and let me know what you want to see next, but until next time, Godspeed.